was a nice and quick introduction. That was very good. I like that. Um, hello, everyone. How, how are you all? Excellent. Excellent. That's good news. Um, I'm sure this bit, and Joe um, did an amazing painting of me, and it just it, it, it blew me away. And when he asked if I'd come and do a quick spoken word piece uh, or set here at the launch, I. Yeah, I was really honoured and, and happy to, to accept. More honoured than my dress sense looks, because I didn't think when I left the house this morning that I'm coming to an exhibition, so this is my first gig in shorts. <laughs> and my first exhibition launch in shorts, so it's a big night for all of us. Um, I'm glad we could share it. Um, I'm going to do like three pieces. Have any of you been to any sp spoken word shows before? No, see, so that's good, because I like to tell people beforehand how many pieces I'm going to do, so if you hate it, it's kind of a countdown. <laughs> so it's gonna, there's going to be three, so you'll be like, oh, there's only two left. Right, on to the last one. Cool. Finally, we can get back to looking at paintings and drinking a wine and eating cheese and stuff, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, a lot of my stuff is quite um, sweary. So I decided to remove a lot of that, because it's very family orientated and based, and it's a launch, so I thought it'd be nice. So I thought I'd go for basically really depressing stuff. <laughs> so you, hopefully you'll get some like tears in your eyes, and the painters will look even more realistic when you continue to look round. You'll have some wine as well. They'll be talking to you by the end of the evening. It's going to be easy. So yeah, um, this is called A Magician's Assistant. It's tragic. You try to cut yourself in half, but this ain't magic. In fact, it's something far more dark and more dramatic. Self-harm, that's what they call it, because it just affects you. It's your life, your body, so you can choose what you do. And if one day you can't bring it in and of your last breath you are the only witness, then so be it, because it's your last breath and it's nobody else's business. But then, but what about your little sister? I mean, you think your life's been bad. And by no means am I belittling that, because I know the troubles you've had, but a teen finding out her big sister chose death over life, finding out that instead of turning to her of your problems, you turn to a knife. That's a whole lot of pain to deal with, and a whole lot of damage. And the only role model she has now is little more than words engraved in granite, but as you said before, this just affects you. It's your life, your body, so you can choose what you do. And if one day you can't rein it in and of your last breath you are the only witness, then so be it, because it's your last breath and it's nobody else's business. But then, what about your parents? God knows they've done all they can to support. Yeah, you didn't grow up in a mansion, but they gave you the best life they could afford. And the moment that last bit of life trickles out and your lungs cease to breathe, they've failed the most important task that they will ever receive. They've failed to give their child a life that's worth living. And that's a failure that as long as they live, of themselves is unforgiving. But, as you said before, this just affects you. It's your life, your body, so you can choose what you do. And if one day you can't rein it in and of your last breath you are the only witness, then so be it, because it's your last breath and it's nobody else's business. But then, uh, what about your friends? How did they fail to see this coming? I mean, you can only take so much pain, and recently it feels like the tap's been left running. Families grow distant, but it's supposed to be your friends you can rely on. They shouldn't just be there for fun and drinks, they should be your shoulder to cry on. They should be the one you turn to when you can't turn to your family. But that foul too, because they would never ask for it, their support should have been mandatory, but, as you said before, this just affects you. It's your life, your body, so you can choose what you do. And if one day you can't rein it in and of your last breath you are the only witness, then so be it, because it's your last breath and it's nobody else's business. But then, oh, what about me? Oh, what kind of boyfriend am I? Instead of living a life I was a big part of, you would rather die. Instead of fighting through together and turning things around, you decided the grass was greener on the other side of the ground. Of our shared lives, there was nothing worth living for as far as you could see. So if that's the case for you, what is there left in this life for me? But, as you said before, this just affects you. It's your life, your body, your sister, your parents, your friends and your partner, so you can choose what you do. And if one day you can't rein it in and of your last breath you are the only witness, then forget everybody else, because that ain't something that you've got to live with. The magician's assistant. Too many problems to list them. Not enough people to listen. The magician's assistant. <laughs>